so something really quite annoying has um, occurred uh, which has sort of slowed down the process of um, uh, carrying on with Eloy and what what it is um, it's to do with the software plugins now I've spoken before that what I've wanted to do with this album is start to toy around a little bit more with distortion and um, saturation um, because I wanted a more gritty sound and feel to some of the instruments um, <clears throat> and so I figured that a, a really nice way of looking at it would be to um, to either use f filtering with uh, distortion and or saturation um, and um, also sort of changing things like um, uh, the bit depth of stuff as well which which I've got tools in logic which will do some of those things but to be able to record something and then put a plug in which has that specific job where I can tweak and play around with some of the settings until I get what I want um, I think uh, uh, would have I, I assumed would make the process a little bit more streamlined um, but of course what's, ha what's happened now is that because I'm using an older system I'm using a 2012 iMac which I bought second hand anyway um, to run Logic Logic won't update to the um, or it can't update to the latest because my operating system has now reached the maximum for that processor and that type of iMac um, so I'm stuck with what I have um, and at this stage you think well once you start adding newer plugins and newer pieces of software you have to look more and more at the compatibility uh, between them and your system the system that you're running and this is uh, where I think I am with some of these plugins um, that I recently purchased um, now I'm not going to mention what plugins they are, I'm not going to mention the companies because I don't want to diss anyone, I'm merely stating that this is, um, this is uh, something that's, that's stopped me from being able to progress that much further. But, but it is an, uh, an interesting and, and not, a, uh, not a new phenomenon. Um, in in the the bad old days of me using very early copies of of Cubase with dongles and um, using audio cards and uh, MIDI interfaces that uh, uh, and getting them to all talk together without delays and um, to be compatible all compatible at the same time um, was a nightmare for someone who wasn't actually doing it as their job for me it was sort of come in put things together try them that works that works um, add a little eight track recorder to a to be in sync with an, a, an old Mac yeah, at the time actually I think I was using a Mac clone um, those old days of sort of around about the year 2000 when when uh, Apple had released um, its operating system so you had clones for, for a short while mine worked fine but um, at the same time with all these extra bits of hardware just to be able to record into Cubase was a nightmare I could switch on one day and everything was fine switch on the next go to something that was pre-recorded and I've because I've got keyboards midied up I've got an extra 8 track um, synced up to Cubase which is sitting on an old Mac and they would just um, have issues from time to time you know the handshakes would be would be lost things weren't talking to other things and had gone off in a corner and had a bit of a uh, 
a bit of a Mardi. So that was the problem with um, with the early days, and and it's got so much better. Uh, everything is tighter. It's within one box. A lot of the uh, issues that you might may have had, which would have been handshakes between hardware and software, are handled within the software now. So you've just got ports and things, and the hardware is built into one box, and the software runs it. And of course, when you get to the um, uh, you've got third parties that are also investing in uh, some of their hardware and software properties on a system like a Mac or a PC uh, you find that the updates get staggered so if there's a system update you might find that there might there may just be a problem with a uh, an app um, or some piece of software that you're running and I think that's where I am at the moment um, I think because it's an older system I can't update um, I, I'm, I'm sort of present myself with two roads and the first road is that I carry on with a system that I know, that's older that maybe doesn't have all the whistles and bells that I might like do I need them? That's a different question um, but uh, if I stay with what I have it means that I have the compatibility um, and maybe to achieve some of these uh, qualities of sounds maybe I, I need to find another way of achieving them um, that's that's one way of looking at it so a little bit more hard work a little bit more investing in time to try and uh, achieve something and actually it, it may be that you learn so much more from doing it that way the other side of course is that other road is that I say oh it's time to update so uh, that means updating the Mac so that I can update the operating system so that I can download update the later version of logic so that the newer plugins that I might purchase or try or demo are going to be compatible with the latest we hope the latest um, hardware and software that I'm, I'm now running um, <clears throat> but of course that has uh, um, that has cost involved and it, one could argue that that's that's laziness if there is if there isn't something that is very specific that I really do need that I can't get out of my current system um, then that's just laziness on my part or maybe just the uh, wanting to buy myself a uh, another present uh, which is the sort of de rigueur, isn't it, nowadays? Um, so maybe I should be sensible. Maybe what I've done through talking this way is um, talk myself out of an upgrade path and rather stay with the um, the tried and, uh, and trusted and tested and look at some other way of creating these distortion filtered type effects which is a shame because the software I was looking at I think would have would have worked and it may be that um, this, this uh, incompatibility with the with the, the plugin and the plugin manager within logic um, <clears throat> it may be that it will just just suddenly start working um, I have I, I went through that that route which most of us go down which is that uh, oh this has stopped working look at the compatibility spec of it yes it should run on my system and then go and look on YouTube or Google it and you find um, lots of people who have the same issue and they say this, this is the process um, so you clear the cache you delete it uh, you, uh, you, you reinstall it again you make sure you've got the latest version um, and uh, also you look in these extra folders where some of the legacy installations might be and that would stop it from working and uh, done all that and uh, reinstalled it twice uh, contacted the company over in the states and and they suggested a few things that didn't work <clears throat> um, and each time I've actually contacted them, I've sent the spec of my machine, what I'm using, just, just to try and make it easier in case they said, ah, yes, all ah, right, yeah, we've got a few issues. Um, uh, just knowing would have helped. 
but um, I'm left with uh, many unanswered questions and um, not a little bit of frustration because I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be discussing bits of damn software when all I'm trying to do is uh, record efficiently. Um, so it could be that I've, okay, not a lot of money, wasted £30 on a, a bit of software. I'll come back to it maybe at a later date. Um, <clears throat> and uh, just learn to work without it because um, I I've yet to get it to work at all so at this point um, so I, I think um, yeah these these frustrations have really denied me the ability to really get on with this project this Eloy project um, through December uh, although there have been a, a, a few other um, uh, changes my um, my uh, uh, work uh, has changed um, <clears throat> thank you lockdown that was very good very good of you um, and um, yeah my my uh, I'm working in a slightly different field now but I do get time to do stuff like this which is fantastic uh, so Yes, um, I think I, I may very well have taught myself out of trying to go the up, upgrade path. Um, and of course, this is this is this is the other thing that I, I think are hitting a lot of people that that use um, computers and uh, are working in digital fields. Um, in the olden days it used to be that you'd have a whole box of hardware and, a, and you'd have a box of CDs, DVDs for the software and you would buy and if you didn't want to upgrade then so be it. You stayed where you were and you had that box and that was it, that's what you used. And it seemed like the sort of that, that these pieces of software weren't being developed at such high speeds now of course you've got an issue where everything is about um, not ownership but renting so you're and, and I hate it personally I think it's awful I think it really is a, a money grabbing um, way of cornering people um, which is why I, I left the Adobe suite years ago I think too too damn expensive but many people will actually pay monthly for a piece of software that either sits in the cloud or they have access to and they get free updates and for them that works um, that's not for me I, I want to be able to own a piece of software and decide when and if I feel I need to update being dragged into this technology of forever pro progressing um, and it forever being sold as here's a new feature uh, and I know we're all like it I'm, I'm like that as well from time to time where you, you just want something because you want it because it sounds cool but do you need it? No, of course you don't need it and I think that's the case with this um, uh, particular plugin or the couple of plugins that I that I bought um, that I thought that would make my life easier that I could actually from from what I heard and seen of it it was ideal for me being able to inject some of these qualities that I wanted with some of the recorded instrumentation um, but actually I think I think in hindsight um, I need to work harder and find another way of doing it this is not a magical piece of software that is going to make me sound completely different to anyone else no it's not it's just a tool but it was a particularly useful tool um, for adding filtered uh, gritty grimy distortion uh, and having having the control over that and over the stereo field as it as it happened uh, I, I just quite like the idea of it it means I can still achieve that I think with what's in the box within logic and maybe even possibly taking stuff out of the digital realm and um, you know maybe sort of 
recording things and putting them on small speakers and then re-recording them um, to, to try and get that sort of uh, gritty, horrible quality. Doesn't sound good, does it, for the album? But uh, um, in my head, it sounds fine. <laughs> Whether it will sound good on the speakers, I really don't know. Um, but I think that is probably the fun of it. And I possibly, yeah, do you know what? I've kind of, from the beginning of this video to now, I think I've just convinced myself. Um, uh, so it's like a little bit of therapy, really, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, th I think I've got to find the manual way of doing this. And I get much more out of it. It's going to be more fun uh, than just putting a plug in on a channel and um, after I've recorded something and then switching it on and playing around with something on screen. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, thanks for talking. That's really sorted me out. Um, you have a good day.